Welcome to Build the Skate Park using SketchUp. My name is Brian and we're going to go through some simple steps today on how to build a ramp. Starting simple because that's how you learn. You learn by what I call baby steps. Start by learning one tool, another tool, how it works, and then we move on to the more advanced features. As you can see, I am using my own template here. I made some grandstands, a parking lot. I like to build everything to scale. And so I'm going to show you how to build a ramp to scale. One thing that's really important is knowing how to build the template to scale. That's something I'll probably go over in another tutorial. But for today, if you go to Window, Preferences, you can see that SketchUp offers a bunch of different templates. I prefer to use Feet, right here, Urban Planning Feet, and then I created my own template from that. I'll show you why. Because as we design and create lines, faces, objects, we want to be able to use the keyboard to type in how far, how high, that sort of thing, how wide, the depths. So today let's start with some simple commands. First of all, when I design, I prefer to design vertically instead of horizontally. And that's because that's how everything sits, is vertical. So let's start with a line. Press L on the keyboard. Here's your little pencil line tool. And I'm going to start right at the center of the axis. I'm going to move my mouse up. You can see there's a line here, but when it follows the axis, you can't see it. It's there. I'm going to type 4. And you'll see down here on the right, this is how long the length of the line is, or any dimension will show up in there. So I'm going to press 4, Enter. So there's 4 feet. And because I want to make a 4-foot ramp. And the, the length isn't quite so important, because we can always adjust it later. So I'm going to choose 11. And what I'm making here is a plane or a face that's vertical. Notice how it snaps. I can just go straight down. It creates a blue axis. That's a Z axis, vertical. I can click here because it's snapping to this corner. SketchUp is great at making things very easy, very simple to build in 3D. If you use the middle mouse, you can turn the camera, rotate your world or around your object. This is going to be kind of like a uh, canvas where I'm going to draw some basic shapes on here that will represent our ramp. So first of all, one thing you'll learn when you draw in SketchUp is if I just start drawing lines like this and try to move something, it messes up your object. So what I like to do is create what's called groups. You can select this whole face and notice it selects all the lines on the outside including the surface right click and choose group. And before I do, there's more than one way to select. There's a dotted rectangle and a solid. And notice you have to go in that direction. So if I drag to the left, dotted, drag to the right, solid. The reason why is because when you drag a dotted line, only things inside will be selected. Notice the lines at the top and the right were not selected. But if I go to the right, Nothing selected because it has to be inside the rectangle. It's a very great feature in order to select what you need to select. Or what I do is I triple click and it selects everything. Right click, make group. I'll explain, explain groups later in components. Right now group is a very simple way to have an object made of faces, vertices, lines. And the reason why is because now I can draw on it like a canvas without it messing up that face. All right, now what we need to do is we're going to create an arc. So press A. You know, see down here on the right it says 12. Basically, an arc is not a curve; it's just straight lines. And so it's going to have 12 sides on this arc, and this represents the front of a ramp or the the face of a ramp. I start by clicking in the very bottom corner. I'm just going to eye it for now and pick anywhere I want on this ramp and when I start moving my mouse down you see the curve and what you don't want is for the curve to go below your rectangle because that's below the ground you want it to be a smooth curve so you want it to look smooth notice it's sticking to the, 
the red axis. Now it's going in the wrong direction. That's another reason to have this background, this uh, canvas, is you can keep your mouse on that canvas. So try to keep that line black here. Move your mouse in the direction where it doesn't go through the bottom and click. So there you go, there's a ramp. Press space for your move or select tool. It's a select tool. Hit delete on the keyboard. Press L. And now what we can do is draw the platform. So we're going to snap that edge. Now it's important to keep it on the green axis because notice if I go on the red axis, let me pan this over, it's going the wrong way. We want it to be a platform. It's really important to get familiar with panning because you want to have a good angle of the camera. Or the camera should be at, a, at an angle that helps you to focus on what you're drawing and which direction you're drawing. <laughs> this is just how 3D works. I'm going to press 4 on the keyboard, enter. There's my 4 foot platform. Remember we can follow the Z axis here. But oh no, it's not snapping. That's fine. Without clicking, roll your mouse over here. Go back. Bam. The snapping is such a great tool. And there's the side of our ramp. Now if I was building this to build an actual wood ramp, I would build the thickness as if it were a piece of plywood. But <coughs> not today. We're going simple. Press P on the keyboard. This is called push-pull. And this feature is cool because you can make a 3D object on the fly. So if you click once, you know, make sure to click and let go. Move your mouse in whatever direction you want it to go. And the reason why you click and let go is because now we're free to type in a number. If you click and hold, you can't type a number, or at least if you do, it gets messed up. So I'm going to pull mine or push in that direction. I'm going to press 8, enter, and now we have an 8-foot ramp. And for the most part, that's good. There's no coping. And we didn't choose how many 2x4s, how many screws, that sort of thing. That's something we can do in a later tutorial. Now see how these lines, that's what your curve is actually made of. The dotted lines mean they're visible. So when I click away, you can't see them. And that's great because there's a little bit of shading here. It makes it look round. Now let's try to select it again. If we do click on the right side and drag to the left, everything inside, actually, if you want to select just a portion, see how it selects just some of the faces, not all? Of course, that's not what we want. Everything inside this front and back of the ramp will be selected. So this is like a feature you have to be careful with because if there's other objects, for example, if I go like this, now I just selected the background, which has my stands and parking lot. So I have to be very careful. I prefer to triple click. Triple click does the same thing. As long as nothing else is touching it, they will not be selected. And now we're going to create a group. Groups are a very simple way to create this, these faces, these lines into its own object. And now you can easily just move it around if you wanted to. Don't need to. Let's do some coping. Can't have a ramp without coping. So what I'm going to do is change the camera angle so I can draw a circle on this side press C and same thing with this circle it has sides 24 is kind of a lot so let's go with oh, 12 is good still might be a lot it sets a small circle and then you're gonna roll your mouse over the corner or the end point of this ramp and drag down well, clearly that's too big I found that point one is a good size and that might look big but it's because I'm zoomed in remember this is only an 8 foot ramp <coughs> four feet high that's a good size coping but it's sticking out way too far you would try to write up this ramp you'd be stumbled by that coping so let's double click you can triple click too that's fine press M snap your mouse in the same corner which is also the center of the circle let's move it back a little bit remember it has to stay on the green axis if you keep getting caught up on the blue and the green once it's screen, you can press shift and it'll lock to green. And press and hold, sorry. Hold that shift down. And then you can let go. So that's better. But still trying to roll in or drop in, it's going to be hard with that coping sticking up so high. So you can click anywhere on this face. You can click here. Let's move it down. Same thing, hold shift and it'll, st it'll lock to that axis. Let's go down a little bit. That's good. In fact, I might want to go forward just a tiny bit. 
Yes, you can type in increments on the keyboard, but not a big deal. Sometimes the eyeballing is just fine because it's, it's a concept. Press P. Gonna push out. And here's where snapping comes in handy. You can type 8 or see how I s my mouse is snapping to these edges? That's the same edge as 8 foot. Click. And there you go. Coping. But as I said before, you want this to be its own object. So let's triple click. You can see all the lines. Right click. Group. There we go. Basically done. We have a four foot ramp high, eight feet wide, a decent curve that's not too slow but not too steep. You definitely do some disasters on that, some blunt stuff, fakey. But if we were designing an actual ramp made of wood, as I said before, I would I would press and pull the thickness of each board to compensate for the thickness, and then I would draw each two by four. I've done this before. It actually works really well because you can now count how many 2x4s do I need, how much wood do I need, how many screws do I need, and so when you go purchase your equipment, it works out perfectly. Alright, so there's a simple ramp. You can do this at any height, any width. And here's a fun feature about components. Components are the same as groups, but they have more properties. So let's select our uh, ramp here, right click, make a component. So in this component, we're gonna just gonna call it four foot quarter, oh whoops, I got caps on, quarter, you can call it quarter pipe if you want. Spaces are fine. Caps lowercase is fine. Don't worry about these other features. That's for other types of components, like a window. You don't have to put a description unless you want to. And you want to replace the selected, which is our groups. Create. There we go. Looks the same. No big deal. But here's the benefit. If we go, let's say we have a toolbar called components. Oh, this is not behaving. Oh, oops, I want to do paint bucket. There we go. You have a toolbar called components here. As you can see, I've made a bunch of components for my template. Because if I want to have a rail, a wedge, bank, bump to bar, it's already there, it's already made. So that's something you can do ahead of time is start building the objects you want to use most often, like a mani pad, different heights, different widths, different colors. Here's our quarter pipe. If you click it, bam, another quarter pipe. Easy, right? Let's say I want to make a half pipe. Take this guy and we're going to flip it, flip along green. Cool. Now why components? Because we can do this with groups. Well, this is why. If I go into this component, and let's say I start resizing this ramp, they all resize. This is valuable because you're making a skate park, and let's say you want all your ramps to be blue. Instead of having to keep building different groups or copy-paste and color them blue, you color one blue, they all turn blue. It's pretty cool. Another way to do a half pipe, select all. You can do Control C for copy, Control V for paste. You don't have to snap it to the ramp immediately, but we do want to flip it. Right click, flip along green, and now you can move by snap. And yes, I'm moving the move tool that is M. Move tool, snap into place. There you go. No, I don't think so. We're missing something. We need some flat bottom. Let's go eight foot. Why eight foot? Because that is the size, typically the size of most pieces of plywood when you go buy them. Which is why I made a ramp four feet high, because most plywood comes in four foot by eight foot. And if you wanted to, press R, let's do a little rectangle. Oh, there's something wrong here. I did not make these straight. 
Those kinds of things happen all the time. Very easy to fix in SketchUp. I bet it wasn't on the green axis. We could lock with shift. Eight. Aha. Okay, it didn't work. Eight on the green axis. Now they should be lined up. Press R. It's okay to leave that selected. No big deal. Now notice this face is gray. This is white. You want it to be the white side. So we're also going to do reverse face. There we go. There's our half pipe. We got coping. Done. Simple half pipe. Now technically you could select it all and say, hey, I want a bigger half pipe. If you press S, something that when you want to modify objects, especially with scale, they have what's called grips. These little green squares are grips. If I choose the center one, I can drag this thing way up, right? Well, first of all, I didn't select the scale. And second, that is not a great curve. I prefer to build it from scratch. You could also shrink it like this. That doesn't mess up the curve, but not a great way to design a ramp. Unless it's a conceptual, you can easily squish, squash, resize to any size you need to fit your skate park. But I prefer to build to scale just because everything relates to each other when it comes to scale. And you want it to look correct, the right sizes. There we go. That is a half pipe. That is a quarter pipe. Let's review. What did we do? We chose L. Made it quick. 4 foot. 11 foot. Bam, bam. Made a surface. I got to triple click that properly. Made a group. We did an arc. Eyeballed it. Right? And this is how we made our platform quickly, four foot. You can see how fast it is to build something in 3D. Bam, there's our ramp. Well, it's not to scale, but. Some of these tools will come in handy. You'll be able to build quickly and you'll be able to modify quickly and your skate park will come to life in no time. Just like with some of these cool objects I made, I got hubbas, I got ledges, mani pads. I even made the coping on the mani pad. Spine. Different heights, three foot, four foot, five foot. <laughs> Picnic table. So we can pop that up here. Bam. Yeah, right. Get a mani up to a picnic table. So many fun things you can do here. I even made some ramps that will snap together. Oh, here's just a quarter pipe. You can easily make a spine out of that or slap it up next to a, uh, a a wedge like this one. Anyways, I'm not going to get into detail, but that's some of the great fun things you can do in design your skate park. All right, have fun. See you next time.